All right, guys, well, today's video is one that I'm actually really excited about because we're going to be doing, as you can probably tell from the title, something relating to Windows Longhorn. But this is not going to be any Windows Longhorn related video. You know, we've done like development history videos and that sort of thing on this channel and even some Windows tutorials relating to Longhorn. But today's video is going to be different because what we're going to be trying to do is upgrade through a bunch of Windows Longhorn builds, as you can see by this wonderful set of CDs and DVDs that we've got here with this computer. So think of this kind of as this video that we did on upgrading from Windows 1.0 to Windows 7 on the 98 PC which I do still have over here. It has been kind of moved over here temporarily for this video. Uh, but we're going to be doing that with Windows Longhorn builds right here on this laptop. So what we're going to do is start out with build 3686, which is a Milestone 3 build. It's actually the earliest known build that has been leaked. We're going to then upgrade to a Milestone 4 build, a Milestone 5 build, a Milestone 6, and then Milestone 7. Hopefully it's all going to work. And yes, these are all pre-reset builds, by the way. So we are starting with the pre-reset stuff in this video. We may get into some of the post-reset stuff, or we may save that for another video. But we're going to mainly focus on the pre-reset builds. And honestly, the Windows Longhorn builds, as you guys probably know, are some of the most interesting builds of Windows to take a look at. Uh, because they're just very unique. Uh, they're not like anything else because of the fact that Microsoft did do the development reset in 2004. Uh, I'm sure you guys, if you know anything about Longhorn or Windows Vista's development, you know that uh, development was reset and all of this pre-reset stuff, a lot of the things that were introduced in these pre-reset builds uh, did not make their way into Windows Vista. Or they did, but they just looked totally different. And you're going to see that as we install these builds if you've never seen it before. So, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this all set up and we're going to get started. This machine originally ran Windows XP. You see I've got it running Windows 7 right now. Um, but uh, yeah, so this was actually released in the early 2000s, uh, which is around the time that Windows Longhorn was in development. So we're going to go ahead and actually restart the system here. Um, because we do actually need to obviously do a clean install of this build and then we're going to attempt to upgrade. First thing we have to do is actually change the date and time of the system because uh, these builds do have a time bomb on them. So we're going to change the date. Let's just do September. Yeah, September 29th, uh, 2010. Two. Another important thing to mention is, as you guys may or may not be able to tell with kind of the style that I do these particular videos in, uh, I have not tested this prior to recording. Like, I've, I've not went ahead and gone through this whole thing prior to recording. So, if we experience any problems, uh, you're going to kind of see my live reactions to those problems and kind of, you know, troubleshooting and uh, fixing them. So that is, again, the whole point of these style of videos is they're not tutorials. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and press enter here to go through. You can see it says XP Pro up at the top. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of references to XP. Uh, the setup itself is going to look very similar to XP. It may come up with a, yeah, 180 day license um, because this is a, a pre-release product. It actually says right there, Microsoft product codename Whistler. And we're going to, yeah, so we've actually got uh, two partitions on here. One is the system reserve. Uh, and then we've got an NTFS partition. We're just going to delete both of these because those are uh, for Windows 7. So we're going to just delete both of those and we're going to install in the unpartitioned space. Yeah, one thing I can say, switching over to these rewritable CDs has definitely been a uh, wonderful thing because, well, let me just show you. This is my spiral of CDs slash DVDs. The majority of these are CDs, as you can probably tell, but there are um, a decent amount of DVDs on here as well. Um, but yeah, this is, you can see it's literally like kind of about to overflow, but everything does fit on here. And uh, yeah, I just went to the store one day and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get some rewritable ones. And this is, I mean, I think this was like six or seven dollars and there were six of them. So it was about a dollar per CD, but it has been wonderful because I just basically reuse these. Uh, over and over and over again for these videos because you can rewrite them, which is great. All right, so I just entered in the uh, product key and something that I realized shortly before recording this video is uh, the M3, M4, and M5 builds, or at least the builds that I have selected, all use the exact same product key and the M6 and M7 builds use the same product key. 
Uh, and I mean, yeah, that's just kind of found that interesting, but it makes sense. Longhorn Upgrade Saga. We'll go ahead and press uh, next. And oh yeah, there's a 15 character limit for that. So we're going to go ahead and use the shorter name, which actually is conveniently Longhorn Upgrade. So we'll press yes. And it's got our, our date and time correct. We're going to put, well, actually the, the uh, time is not correct, but it's not 4 a.m. when I'm recording this. But yeah, so we're going to see by going through this upgrade and, and kind of similar to what I did in the uh, Windows 1.0 to Windows 7 video on the 98 PC and in my original video on that back in 2016, uh, we're going to kind of create files and modify preferences in this build, and we're going to see if all of the modifications we make stay consistent as we upgrade through all of these different builds. So one thing is going to be the computer name that I just said. We're going to see uh, if that stays the same or if it asks us to change it again. Uh, but we're also going to, you know, create files on the desktop. We might modify the theme a, a little bit, you know, change like font size, that sort of thing, change the size of the icons. Do you guys want a little sneak peek at a future video? Yeah, check it out. We got some old Motorola phones in here. So this right here is a Motorola. Um, I actually don't know the model number of this particular one, but uh, it is a flip phone uh, from sometime in the early 2000s. I've also got the iconic Motorola Razor. Yeah, I do have one of these uh, with me at the moment. And this one, I am planning on actually doing a kind of like a full retrospective slash history video on this. I think it'll be pretty cool. So yeah, we are uh, registering components currently. And a little side note, did you guys know that the keyboard that I use for the 98 PC is a monorail keyboard? Uh, yeah, from that all-in-one computer back from like the mid to late 90s. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have the actual computer, but I do have the keyboard. And I actually found this at a thrift store many, many years ago. It, it was actually... Actually, oh my gosh, I think the video that I got this in, I think I was, I, my channel had surpassed 50 subscribers. That is how long ago this was. I think it was in 2012 or 2013. Yeah, that's how long ago that was. But yeah, the monorail keyboard, uh, it's a pretty awesome, I mean, I would love to find the, like one of the monorail computers, but it is pretty rare, but I was able to find this keyboard I assume the person who donated it had the monorail computer. Maybe it was at that same thrift store, but someone else got it. Um, but yeah, let me know, guys, if you kind of like the off-topic ramblings. I've kind of tried to cut those out in most of these videos that I've done. But I don't know, maybe you guys kind of like this stuff where I just kind of show you guys like, oh, hey, I'm going to be working on a, on a video on some Motorola phones, or I have a monorail keyboard, or here's the 98 PC, or here's the Dell monitor that we always <laughs> get to see, but we're not actually looking at now. Yeah, check out this setup I got too. I don't know if I've ever actually done a video on this, but I actually do have a proper like set up with studio lights now it's really awesome i don't know i mean yeah just hopefully you guys like these kind of off-topic ramblings if you don't i can definitely cut them out of the video but uh i just think it's you know fun once in a while and i mean hey this video is going to be super long anyway so it's not really like an extra five minutes of rambling is going to do much but uh yeah we're at two minutes right now we're saving settings and uh oh check that out we're moving any temporary files used perfect so we will let's go ahead and zoom out here Oh no, one or more minor errors occurred. I think this is actually kind of normal. I think um, setup has detected is not, yeah, see, not signed properly by Microsoft. That's because these are like newer versions of the files that I guess Microsoft hasn't signed properly. Uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> the computer name Longhorn Upgrade Saga was truncated to Longhorn Upgrade to make it a valid NetBIOS name. Yeah, because it's a, a max of 15 characters. But yeah, all of these, they just ask you to use the system file checker utility to verify the integrity of the file. But since this is a beta build, these files are not going to be like the same version that they were in, in XP. It says they're not signed properly. So we're just going to go ahead and cl uh, click close because it's not a issue that we have to worry about. And so this build actually identifies itself as Longhorn XP Professional. Uh, and this is again build 3683. There's the full uh, build string. This is a Lab 06 build. So we're going to go through the out-of-box experience here. This is most likely um, going to be exactly the same as XP's. We're going to go ahead and just quickly breeze through this. We can just hit Alt N to skip to the next screen and we're going to press next. Thank you. Congratulations. You're ready to go. So it actually didn't ask us about updates or anything like that. So, and yeah, this is where you kind of get your first glimpse that this is not regular XP. Uh, the logo there has been changed, the codename Longhorn. There's a new clock up there at the very top of the welcome screen. The welcome screen basically has a different color scheme. It's the same design 
obviously with the changed logo and the added uh, clock up there. Here we are in Longhorn XP Professional. This is, like I said, an M3 build, Milestone 3. Uh, so it's got a new theme. We've got a new, you know, design for the start menu, for the taskbar, pretty awesome stuff. Uh, all the programs here, I believe, are, I mean, we've still got all the XP icons and everything. I'm really not going to spend so much time going over the builds because the point of this video is really upgrading through all of these builds. But I will kind of give you guys a brief glimpse at all of these builds just because, I mean, we, we are going to install all of them. So might as well just take a look at each one for a couple minutes at least. Uh, so we'll go into my computer here, and and yeah, you can see even all the way back in this super early build, uh, we actually have center title text too. Check that out. So yeah, that's actually really interesting. So we also have the uh, drive space indicator, where it basically like gives you a visual graph of how much uh, space is taken up on the C drive and on the DVD. Uh, which was a feature introduced in Vista. The overall design of the File Explorer or of the Windows Explorer is very, very different. Um, we have, I mean, really what's changed up top on the menu bar and everything is this new color scheme. Uh, but the sidebar here, kind of like the side panel, it got a whole new design. I, I mean, we have pretty much the same like tasks that we were able to do in XP. But we've also got this, like, just the way that this is laid out by default, the way that it actually displays how it's got this, like, preview pane up here, uh, it, it, it does look rather different than what we saw in XP. We can go into help and about here. I just think this theme is super cool. I just really like it. But yeah, I just think all of these early Longhorn builds are just, they're so fascinating to take a look at because it kind of gives us a glimpse at what Windows Vista could have been had Microsoft not uh, gone through with the development reset. But we're gonna actually go ahead and make some modifications. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and kind of change the uh, size of the icons. We'll go ahead and go into properties here. And uh, oh yeah, there's a whole new uh, display properties window, by the way. So we'll go ahead and actually just open up the classic one. So we'll go to uh, advanced. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is where we can actually kind of change like the size of all this stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll actually start with changing the appearance and kind of the text size and everything. So for the active title bar, let's make it like super large here. We'll change the font to, is there comic? Comic Sans, let's go. <laughs> We're gonna make it Comic Sans. Let's make it this neon green color. Oh, this is gonna look so bad. Um, yeah, the main reason that I'm doing this is just to see if all of this stuff uh, is going to take effect like when we upgrade. I know this is this is going to look awful, but <laughs> we're just kind of doing this. So we'll go ahead and press OK and apply. Oh, actually our uh, custom color scheme like for the um, title bar itself is not going to apply because we're not using the uh, Windows Classic theme, but our wonderful Comic Sans neon green font will apply. Uh, so, and it makes the, oh my gosh, look at the build string. Oh my gosh, Longhorn XP Perfect. That's so, oh my gosh. Well, the text below that actually stayed the same. Um, but okay, so customize desktop. And let's go ahead and show the mic. Let's just show all these icons here. And we'll hit OK. So that will, once we hit apply, it will, yep, show all these icons here. Um, we're not going to change the theme. We can change the taskbar and start menu as well. Let's uh, let's try to get rid of the clock. I also went ahead and turned on the sidebar and added some of these uh, tiles to them. They're, they're called tiles in this build as opposed to, you know, gadgets or... Uh, well, they were called gadgets in uh, you know Vista, but they didn't look like this. Obviously, the sidebar got a total redesign. It was obviously transparent or sort of transparent. Uh, and we've got this little programs list, which we can actually bring out and just kind of set on the. Well, it, it was on. Oh, you know, it just didn't switch over because I had it on on this side and just didn't uh, swap over with the sidebar. So we've got our once again the wonderful Comic Sans font there. So we're gonna go ahead and pop in uh, our next build, which is 4005. This is a milestone four build that was compiled in January of 2003. So a few months have passed. This build that we're booted into right now is once again from September of 02. And we're going to choose install Longhorn. You see we kind of have an XP style uh, window here just with a different color scheme. It actually looks like the olive green color scheme from XP. Can we, oh dang, upgrade has been disabled. To upgrade, you must be running Longhorn build 4000 or higher. So as it turns out, we're not gonna be able to upgrade uh, to 
build four, uh, 4005 here, even if we upgraded to a, a newer build, uh, because it does require build 4000. And the only reason we actually know build 4000 exists is because it is mentioned on this very screen. It asks you to upgrade, you must be running Longhorn build 4000 or higher. This is again build 4005, 4005, and it's the earliest milestone 4 build uh, that we have been able to get access to, you know, because this build was actually leaked. Basically, we're going to have to do a clean install because even if we upgraded to the last milestone 3 build, it's still not going to be uh, the build that we need to upgrade to this one because you need, again, build 4000, which we don't have access to. And we're going to go with an advanced install and just click on continue. And we're going to install on our, you know, one partition that we've got and it's going to go ahead and copy setup files the plan is we're going to get this installed we're going to make some modifications to the window settings and all of that just like what we did in the previous build and then we're going to try to upgrade to a milestone 5 build and hopefully even if the particular build that i selected doesn't allow us to upgrade hopefully there'll be a minimum version that we need and we can upgrade to that first and then upgrade to the milestone 5 build that's what i'm hoping for but like i said this is a total experiment so uh anything can happen but let's just go ahead and uh, let it copy the setup files here. All right, so it's asking us for the account name, and we can actually create multiple accounts from this screen. So we're going to name one, uh, let's just name it Michael. So we'll create account, and oh, it it like looked like it was going to allow us to make more than one account, but I guess when you click on create account, it just goes to the next phase of the, yeah, it just literally goes to the next phase of the setup. Okay. Uh, so, well, we're logging in now. You see the logon screen looks like exactly the same as we saw in, in the last build. But this is a Milestone 4 build, as you can see by the wonderful wallpaper. The sidebar is enabled by default. It has found, uh, it's found a Microsoft AC adapter. It needs a driver for that? <laughs> It's not even a Microsoft AC adapter. What do you like? The hardware you're installing, it is not past uh, Windows logo testing. We'll continue anyway. System board. System board. System board. System board. System board. Okay, fine. We'll install the system board. So I guess for all of these like it just doesn't automatically install the driver for you uh, we are going to be doing an upgrade you know to the next build anyway so but before we do that let's actually take a look at this build a little bit this is again build uh, 4005 so we will uh, run winver here so you can see it's uh, build 4005 the nt version is once again 6.0 the uh, banner here gets a little bit of a redesign it just says longhorn professional it still identifies itself as longhorn xp professional down here uh, there's the build string on the desktop and yeah we actually did not enter a username like for who owns this computer uh, so it just defaults to windows user so we'll click on ok uh, but once again i want to go into control panel and i want to open up the uh, display properties so let's go into appearance and themes and we're just going to make everything like obnoxiously large i mean that's let's just see how this looks we'll hit ok and apply oh my gosh so yeah so there you go that's how <laughs> Um, that's how it looked. Oh my gosh, look at the size of the, uh, of the buttons there. But we're gonna go with this green, like, neon green Comic Sans font once again. So we'll press OK and apply. There we go. So we got that nice green <laughs> Comic Sans. Look at the size of this stuff in the system tray. Oh my gosh. So we'll close out of that. Um, you can see once again the wonderful build string on the desktop is in Comic Sans. We can also, if we want, we can get rid of the clock. That was another thing that we did. And let's see if we can modify some of the things in the start menu. Let's just get rid of like, uh, let's just change this to one program on the start menu. We'll get rid of internet and email and we'll go to advanced and we're going to, uh, not display. We'll just get rid of a couple things. So now we go into start menu and yeah, you see we only got one thing here. So with all of these wonderful modifications, let's go ahead and try to upgrade to our next build, which is 4020. And this is a milestone five build. So we've got the same end user license agreement, although this time it actually identifies itself as Longhorn, Microsoft Windows software codename Longhorn. Uh, so we're going to accept the terms of the license agreements. And check that out, we have the express upgrade option enabled. So we're just gonna go with that. We're gonna click on continue. 
and uh, we're gonna let it perform the upgrade that's awesome so it, it actually did work all right guys well we're back and I got some good news check it out everything that we set in the previous build is actually still uh, here it's still set to our custom preferences so yep we've got that wonderful uh, neon green comic sans font on the window titles which you know have also been enlarged uh, same thing with the build string down here now now actually just says longhorn professional uh, we go into the start menu and yep you see we've got that same only one item up here and we have you know things like uh, my music are no longer here on the side we don't have control panel these are all custom preferences that we set uh, and yep giant icons I'm also going to make some new icons on the desktop so let's make a new wordpad document we'll call this uh, test and we'll just go in here and oh my gosh <laughs> look at the, you can barely see the oh my gosh like the the border is so large like you cannot even see the oh my gosh that's crazy okay so let's um let's go ahead and just type out something here we'll call the we'll just say hello uh, world and we'll save this and let's make another uh, let's go new uh, let's make a wave sound why not and we'll just keep this named as new wave sound we're also going to change the position of the sidebar so let's do the sidebar on the left side and we'll make it large and the taskbar we'll do on we'll put the large taskbar on the top of the screen so there we go now the next build we're going to take a look at is a milestone six build it's a 4032 which was uh, compiled two months after this one in july of 2003 so i've got that right here we're gonna go ahead and pop it in and all right so the installer comes up like and we can't see all of it so can we click on install longhorn the the button is like okay there we go so yeah that actually worked and check that out we have our express upgrade once again so we're going to click on express upgrade and yeah we're gonna let it upgrade pretty awesome so yeah we are so our last two bills that we did uh 4020 and 4032 um, are both allowing us to upgrade so yeah we're just gonna let this upgrade here all right welcome back everybody so as you can see um the build did actually successfully install but you can see that it did not keep any of our window settings you know with the custom font the super large uh, title bar all of that has been reset back to uh the default settings now the actual files that we created on the desktop are still here uh, and the layout of the sidebar and the taskbar are still here just like we set them in the previous build but it's actually yeah kind of interesting that it did not keep everything uh, this is also one of the longhorn builds that has the uh, pig latin down here at the very bottom uh, on the build string uh, so yeah what we're going to do is well we're going to explore this build a little bit we'll go into run here and uh launch so you can see our we the last thing that we opened up in the last build was the control panel so that is still in here uh, so it kept that we'll just launch winver here so once again this is build 4032 it's a lab 06 build so we'll go into the start menu here let's open up my computer and uh, check out windows explorer so yeah you can see it's actually starting to look it, it's got more of that uh, longhorn look going on just with the way it's designed we actually got the uh, clock icon down here for the uh, these files are hidden there's not a space in between R and hidden uh, so yes the clock for whatever reason they've got that icon down here uh, let's go and yeah you see we've got windows.000 these were created in September of 2002 is when it's saying these files were created for windows.000 and the current windows folder has a date stamp of July of 2003 which is when this build was compiled so it looks like the windows.000 folder is uh, some leftover stuff from the previous build so it's actually still here on the hard drive I also want to go into control panel here and I want to make some more modifications to the uh, display settings once again so we're going to go in here let's not make them as obnoxious this time well first we can change the resolution too let's do that let's make it 1024 by 768 uh, so we can kind of have some more space here to actually work with so we're going to go into appearance here and click on advance let's actually modify some of these settings we'll change the active title bar let's make the font let's go with a uh, Sego UI actually which is the font used in like Windows 8 and Windows 10 we'll change the size to maybe 12 let's change uh, the size of the buttons let's maybe bring them up a little bit I mean I like said I wasn't gonna make this as obnoxious maybe let's make it really tiny let's like make it as small yeah 
Oh my gosh. All right, let's hit apply. Oh, so it actually doesn't really take effect. You can see that the size of the buttons is still like the regular size. So although you can see that the buttons here, since we've actually made everything smaller, uh, we don't actually have like the full window displaying because you can see we've got like the buttons down here like have actually been cut off the font So yeah, the font only takes effect on Windows Like it, it looks like it doesn't take effect in Windows Explorer here because you can see local disk here I mean we can try to reopen it up, but it looks like that uh, Yeah, so on Explorer Windows it doesn't actually take effect. So let's open up another application here uh, Let's try out uh, Windows Messenger. Oh, that's interesting. Is this like an account administrator at Microsoft.com? You cannot sign in with production passport accounts such as Hotmail or MSN. You must use a dash INT, I assume that's worked for internal account. That's interesting, I actually never noticed this. Oh, and yeah, check that out. That is an internal uh, web address there. Because you see it just goes to Longhorn slash uh, UX. Uh, that's interesting. Can we click on sign in with a different account? Oh, so you can turn on .NET and uh, Exchange, and then, then we actually get this, you know, like the regular sign-in prompt here for Windows Messenger. But that's cool. So they actually had a, uh, like, internal, you know, server where they could actually chat on uh, Windows Messenger, you know, from these builds, I guess, to kind of just test it out and, you know, see how it works. We can also add uh, some gadgets to the sidebar here. So let's turn on like a bunch of these. We'll turn on Messenger. So there's our Messenger gadget. I added a couple of gadgets to the sidebar and I also turned on Auto Hide for both the sidebar and the taskbar which actually caused the sidebar to crash as you can see it's just not uh it's not here anymore and i, and I cannot mouse over here uh, and it did not move over to the right side or anything so the taskbar is set to auto hide and the sidebar is set to auto hide when it actually relaunches but we're going to go ahead and with all these modifications we're going to move on to 4074 and so upgrade has been disabled. Uh, so it looks like we may have to, upgrades to this build have been disabled. Now you guys probably saw with build 4074, it did not allow us to actually uh, upgrade. The upgrade option was disabled. And that's because for 4074, there is actually no way to upgrade to 4074 from a previous build. It's been totally disabled. So it doesn't matter what build that you're running. The only way to install 4074 is to do a clean install. So then I actually, moved on to 4093 which is a newer build it's actually the very last uh main milestone 7 build before the reset and 4093 did not allow me to upgrade from this specific build we are again running 4032 right now which is a milestone 6 build 4093 did not allow us to upgrade from 4032 so what i've got in this computer's dvd drive right now is 4042 this was compiled in september of 2003 and you can see it actually does not gray out the express upgrade option it actually allows us to upgrade so we're going to go ahead and do just that we're going to click on express upgrade so we have restarted we're in the next phase of the setup right now it is gathering migration data so it is working which is pretty awesome one thing i also want to briefly discuss us is we have actually gone through a couple of different build branches for each of these builds the very first one 3686 was a lab 06 build uh, 4005 was a main branch build 4020 was an idx02 build 4032 is again a lab 06 build 4074 that we tried to upgrade to but we couldn't because you you cannot upgrade uh, from any build to 4074, you have to do a clean install. That is an IDX02 build, and 4093 is a main build. And 4093, the error message, the exact error message that it gave me said something to the effect of, you can't upgrade from this type of build to this type of build. I thought at first it might be a branch thing, like since we were trying to upgrade from a Lab06 build to a main build, maybe it wasn't going to allow us to do that. But we've been able to do that in the past with these other builds. Uh, it didn't give me a specific build like uh, 4005 did where it said you have to be running build 4000 or later. All right, so we're back. And I believe that the system is actually in a bit of a reboot loop. I actually walked away for probably 30 to 45 minutes. I was making something to eat and I came back and this LSASS uh, error message was up. And you see that it just instantly... Uh, reboots that message says something about like the user password uh, and we'll just kind of let it start up here once again 
you saw there were two entries for Windows Longhorn on that menu along with the setup and Windows PE. So I wonder if it's booting into the like previous Longhorn installation. When trying to update a password, this return status indicates that the value provided and then it just, it just reboots immediately. So we're going to, when it comes up with this menu, we're gonna actually, uh, so we've got Microsoft Windows Longhorn, Microsoft Windows Longhorn, Longhorn Setup, and Windows PE. I mean, I think it was already, because it already restarted once, and it booted into Longhorn Setup, and then copied all, all of the files over that it needs. So I believe it should just boot into Windows Longhorn. Uh, so we'll just try the second option and see if maybe it's somehow booting into the previous version. So it's 4042, you can see down there, and we get the same error message. When trying to update a password, the return status indicate it keeps going away. Value provided as the current password is not correct. So it's an issue with lsass.exe, and yeah, so we're just going to try to boot into, I mean, we've got two other options here, Longhorn Setup and Windows PE. I'm pretty sure we've already gone through the Longhorn Setup. Yeah, it's starting Windows pre-installation environment. Yeah, so it's got the same background as it did in the setup, but you see it's actually loaded up CMD here. So we'll we'll try out Windows PE. Uh, this, this is, this probably, oh yeah, it's just Windows cannot start because the file is missing. Oh, it's missing NTOS kernel.exe. So my guess is somewhere in the installation process, something got corrupted. Something screwed up, obviously, because it's not normally supposed to happen to get stuck in a boot loop. So yeah, I think that we're gonna have to restart 4042's installation, and it very well could be the case that, I mean, since there's not a complete Windows installation on this hard drive, it's probably not going to give us the upgrade option. Uh, so we're, we might have to do a clean install, and if that's the case, then We'll, we'll still install 4042, but then we'll see if we can upgrade to, to 4093. Uh, so let's just pop in the DVD again and restart. And if this does the, like, if it installs and it does this exact same thing where it just, when it boots up after it finishes copying files and it has that LSASS error, uh, then we'll move on to just doing a clean install of like 4074 and then we'll try to upgrade to 4093. We're still gonna try to get one more upgrade in uh, before this video is over. At least that's my plan, but we'll see what happens. Because as you can see, anything can happen in these videos. But I, I think that always adds a little bit of a fun element to it, because you're never because you're never really sure what's gonna happen next. Alright guys, well we're back, and as you can see, we were able to get build 4042 to install successfully. One thing it was able to keep though, which is quite interesting, is the new wave sound and the text document that we had on the desktop. So we'll open the test document here and yep, hello world, just like I said this, I believe this was back two builds ago. So it actually was able to keep that. So apparently it might not have been a clean install. And actually when I think about it, it didn't actually ask me to perform a clean install, it just came up and said, where do you want to install Windows? And I selected the partition and it said, okay, I'm copying files. So it might have just copied the files that the installer last time didn't copy over because again, we were getting that error message because it did keep, again, this these two files I made before we installed this. So it obviously didn't do a full clean install which is actually quite interesting. I wonder if the, okay, so things in the start menu, I mean, none of our user set preferences, like with the start menu, we had kind of modified settings in there. We obviously had changed the window title bars and all of that. So none of that is, is actually here, but it's quite interesting. It was able to keep these two documents. The new wave sound loses its icon. This will still open up with Windows Media Player, as you can see, but uh, there's no, like, this is just a blank wave file, so there's not going to be anything on it, and it does give us an issue because we, we don't have the sound drivers installed, so we're just going to go ahead and close out of that. So yeah, that is pretty cool. So like I said, it turns out it didn't do a full clean install. We're going to go ahead and create a new document on the desktop, uh, just for the purposes of, again, seeing if it lasts throughout the upgrade. Let's do a new bitmap image, and we'll just call this hello. So what has changed throughout this build? Well, right off the bat, you can probably see that we have a new theme. This is called the Slate theme, and it was actually a placeholder theme, kind of similar to the watercolor theme in Whistler. This was not intended to be the final uh, theme for Windows Vista, uh, so it was just a placeholder. Like I said, there was no Pig Latin on the desktop in the build string anymore. The boot screen also did change. You guys probably saw that as it was booting up. Uh, we got a little bit of a different boot screen. 
And this theme actually looks, I mean, when you go into the start menu especially, it has more of a resemblance to Windows XP. I mean, it just basically has a different color scheme, but this looks just like the Luna start menu in XP. We've got the same icon set. We can go into all programs here and see all of our programs that have been installed. Uh, a couple of programs like Tor Windows XP uh, have been removed. As you can see, there's no uh, torstart.exe. You just can't find it, so there's no icon for that. It looks like Remote Assistance is the same. Yeah, it's the same deal there. There's no uh, file for that. It just cannot find it, meaning that it has been removed. We also have some changes with the user folders up here. You see that most of them have actually dropped the my prefix. So we don't have like my photos, my uh, music or anything like that. Photos and videos is now like f the photos folder has been renamed. Uh, it's now called photos and videos. And there's both a documents and a my documents folder. And these actually are different folders on the hard drive. We can open up my documents. You see we've got my music and my pictures inside. Uh, and then we've got, because see, once again, we have music and photos and videos here. Those are different folders as well. If we open up documents, you see that it's blank. So these are actually two different folders. So they were slowly transitioning over to dropping the my prefix from these folders, which Vista would do. While we're here in Windows Explorer, you can see it looks very different as well. Also with the sidebar with some of the gadgets over here, the clock gets a redesign. We can, uh, let's go ahead and turn on classic tray. We can turn on people. We've got all of these uh, gadgets here. Uh, let's just turn on all these sync and we'll turn on slideshow as well. So those are all of the gadgets we have in this build of Longhorn. We can unlock the bar. What we can do when we unlock it though is change the size of it by, we can make it like super large if we want to or really tiny. So yeah, you can actually change the uh, size of it. So if you wanted to make it this large, you can do that. We can change the positioning once again of everything, which we are going to do. So we're going to do a custom position. We're going to make the taskbar on the top of the screen. We'll move the sidebar to the left and we'll hit apply. And there we go. So we're just going to leave it like this again, just for the purposes of uh, seeing if these user set preferences will last through the next upgrade. Once again, we have these uh, found new hardware wizards coming up, and this is basically just going to do this for like every single device on the system. It did this in the few previous builds, so even when we install these, it's just going to come up again with another uh, found new hardware wizard, so we'll click on the continue anyway. And again, Windows XP and Windows Vista does not normally do this for like the system timer. It's not going to ask you to install a like driver for the system timer. The problem is none of these drivers appear to be signed properly. You see it's, or it has not passed Windows logo testing to verify its compatibility. So I assume that's why it's coming up and, and like having you uh, install the driver for all of this stuff because it will literally do this for all of these devices. So we'll just move it out of the way for right now. And we're going to go ahead and actually change some settings with, let's go into a control panel here, appearance and themes, and we're gonna to go to the display properties. And once again, we're going to apply our own custom scheme, which, oh man, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be interesting. So what do we wanna do this time? Do we wanna use Comic Sans again? Let's use, um, well, we've got the active title bar. Let's change this. What other fonts do we have? If we had wingdings in here, I would use that because that would be kind of hilarious. Let's make it small fonts. Oh yeah, check that out. Okay, so we'll make it small fonts. Uh, I guess seven is, can we manually type in a number here? Uh, let's, can we go 90? Oh yeah, okay, so we can. So we'll make it like size 90. We'll change the color to this blue color. It's actually taken a while to uh, apply this theme here. Oh yeah, check that out. So we've got... Oh my gosh, this is this is insane. This like these gigantic buttons remind me of the Win Arrow uh, Tweaker video that we did, uh, where you know we took a look at all the different things you can do with Win Arrow Tweaker. Uh, if you want to check out that video, I'll I'll have it up in the cards. But you can basically do this on uh, Windows 10 using Win Arrow Tweaker, which is pretty hilarious. So oh my gosh, look at the size of the. Oh geez, it just says professional now because it can't even fit the whole thing on the screen. Okay, so I think that we've done enough. Let's, that's, that's probably good enough. So let's go ahead and pop in 4093, which is again on this disc right here. Oh my gosh, okay, so it did actually come up. We'll click on, in, oh my gosh, look at the, 
Is that when I dragged it? Oh yeah, it's like kind of glitching there. You see that as I move the window off the screen, glitches going on there on the right side. But we'll just click on install Microsoft codename Longhorn. Okay, so it looks like it's actually giving us the same error message we got before. And this is what it says. You cannot upgrade between non-componentized and componentized Longhorn installations. All right, welcome back everybody. So I've actually made a bit of an interesting discovery. So what I'm trying right now is I try to install another Longhorn build. This is another Milestone 7 build, and it's a build 4086. It's a little bit older than build 4093. And I was looking, you, you can see we got the exact same error message here where it says you cannot upgrade between non-componentized and componentized Longhorn installations. And I googled that phrase in quotes, like to get a, you know, list of, uh, search results that people are talking about that specific phrase and uh, actually nothing came up it said there were no search results found uh, so yeah basically what's going on is it's not allowing us to upgrade to this build but I actually found out that we are currently running a, a milestone 7 build there are actually two different builds of 4042. One of the builds is a main build and the other is a Lab 06 build. We're running the Lab 06 build, which is Milestone 7. The main build is actually Milestone 6 and they do look completely different. I just downloaded the Milestone 7 build. We have technically completed everything. We upgraded from a Milestone, well, we, we didn't upgrade from three to four, but we upgraded from four to five, from five to six, which, you know, six was 4032. And then we upgraded from uh, 40. 32 to uh, 4042, which is a milestone seven build. So guys, I am pleased to say that we successfully accomplished what we wanted to do for this video. And this video has gone on for about an hour. I've been editing it. I, I think I had about two and a half hours worth of footage to edit. And uh, I got it down to about uh, just under an hour for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if you did, definitely be sure to uh, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below. Be sure to turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do that multiple times a week, every single week here on this channel. And be sure to let me know down in the comments any of your guys' thoughts or questions. Uh, if you guys want to see a follow-up to this where, where we basically do the same thing with the post reset builds and try to kind of work our way up uh, through that, through the many different post reset builds, be sure to let me know because I can definitely do that. But for right now, guys, I'm going to head out of here. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.